Serious human rights violations that could amount to crimes against humanity. Damning findings from a long-delayed UN report on the treatment of Muslim minorities in Xinjiang. Beijing says it's no more than a political tool. And picking up on that UN report that has so angered China, it has some history to it. Mm. It was in 2017 that the first credible allegations emerged of widespread detentions in Xinjiang. It was early 2018 that the UN's Human Rights Office under then-Commissioner Michelle Bachelet announced it would issue a report probing these allegations. December last year, the UN Human Rights Office confirmed the report was complete and would be released, it said then, in a matter of weeks. But nothing happened. Ms. Bachelet herself recently confirmed she had been under tremendous pressure, and I quote her, from all sides both to release and also not to release that report. And looking at its contents today, the reasons for that anxiety are very evident. And they would explain why Ms. Bachelet held back until, we are told, the final 11 or 13 minutes to the end of her tenure as High Commissioner of the UN's Human Rights Office. Well, it's the wording in, in, in that report and the strength of it uh, you, that we've been looking out for. And it didn't mince its words at all. Amongst many other findings, uh, the Chinese government is guilty of serious human rights violations in the Xinjiang region. And it also says that there is credible evidence of torture and sexual and gender-based violence as well. Now, I'm quoting from the report here the extent of arbitrary and discriminatory detention of members of Uyghur and also of other predominantly Muslim groups may constitute international crimes, now in particular, crimes against humanity. Our China, of course, has consistently denied all allegations of rights violations. It has maintained its stance consistently that measures in Xinjiang, including detention camps, aim only to fight violent extremism. In a letter released in response to this report, it accused what it calls anti-China forces of wantonly smearing and slandering China. Yeah, China not happy with this report, but the foreign ministry today calling this report and I'm quoting here, a hodgepodge of misinformation. And also, as you said, Weisu, earlier, a political tool uh, used strategically by the West against China. The报告是虚假信息的大杂烩，是服务美西方已将制华战略的政治工具。人权高专办基于境外一些反华势力的政治图谋杜撰报告，严重违反高专办职责。严重违背普遍客观非选择性非政治化原则。在此证明,人权高专办已经沦为美西方整治广大发展中国家的打手和帮凶。be very familiar to the just resigned UN human rights chief. Uh, Michelle Bachelet's term in office has been overshadowed by the well nigh impossible task of addressing Beijing on allegations of rights abuses, not just in Xinjiang, but also in Tibet, Hong Kong, and in fact, in mainland China itself. Uh, not just to address, but to get results. I spoke to her just as she was due to step down and her frustration with trying to meet demands on all these many fronts of that was palpable. When we did, visited China, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, different authorities, political authorities, national, regional, uh, provincial authorities, and uh, and also business sector, uh, women's organization, etc. And we, I was able to convey, you know, uh, our concerns on violation of human rights and to discuss the different aspects from uh, with the Minister of, uh, of Justice and Law, with the Chief Police, what, what according to us should be a policy who, that should be in compliance with international human rights law and international humanitarian law, and that, should, that they should review all those uh, laws and, and make it uh, if domestically and make it, if I would say, in compliance with that. But at the end, our agreement was to make a follow-up uh, in which we could work, our office could work with, with, with the different instances of the Chinese government on reviewing um, laws and policies regarding minority rights, regarding, for example, um, business and human rights uh, and, and, and labor rights, regarding um, 
ethnic rights, regarding um, judiciary system, etc. A broad range of issues. I'm sure you remember the outrage that greeted this trip. So before you went, the intense debate on whether you should go at all. And when you were there, your official statement, the public anger from many activists and rights groups as well. And now that you are back, you were recently talking about the immense pressure you are under to release a crucial report on the Xinjiang region. Now, the accusation is that you were, and I quote them, not forceful enough in criticizing the Chinese government. You were too weak, too broad, as you just mentioned. These are broad strokes. Is that criticism something you can understand why they would make? Well, I have to say that um, I was the first human rights commissioner to visit China after 17 years. And even though I can understand that some people would have not liked uh, the way the results of the visit, but I have to say many of them didn't want me to go uh, from the beginning, so they were not expecting much. And some of them even were making statements before I did the press conference. So I think there was a feeling in many of them that this visit would not be a success. And even though, I mean, what, the, what were the intentions of the visit? It was to have the possibility to engage with the government in discussing and sharing with them all our concerns, the allegations that we have received on many issues, uh, on not only on Xinjiang, but also on other issues on, related to human rights in China. And we had that opportunity that very little, little then a small amount of people have had that opportunity. I think uh, they are concerned that, as you say, this was a huge opportunity. Uh, and they feel that this opportunity was wasted, given the facts on the ground that you have, the United Nations itself within it, not, not to mention all the other researchers and journalists who have contributed more proof. The UN has more than enough proof. In 2020, you had more than 50 special rapporteurs calling for measures to manage what's happening in China. More recently this year, more than 40, again, special rapporteurs from the United Nations. These are not just alleged violations. These are flat out violations. You had all the proof you need to have gone harder. So their concern is, why did you not? I did. I mean, in the press statement, we did spoke about all those things. So, uh, but I also wanted to maintain an open door to continue working, to make changes a reality. Because it's true, uh, you, can, you can speak out very strongly, and you might have no outcome, no change at all. So my interest is to, to speak, to convey all the messages, to say what is needs to be done, but on the other hand, to get some results from it.